Hey guys, this is Colby. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to rig your character, your Jedi character inside Blender. Uh, continuing where we left off from last time. Uh, we basically finished the robes, the boots, the lightsaber in the previous videos. Uh, today we're just going to use an armature that I've already made in one of my previous videos and rig everything to that with automatic weights. So to get started, uh, once you're done with all your models from the last video, go ahead and apply your modifiers. So for the probes, I have a couple modifiers here. Just press apply on each one. So for the boots as well. And once you mirror it across the other leg, they basically they'll be both just one object. What you have to do is go to edit mode, press everything. So it's like press A, press P to separate by loose parts. Now we have both of them separated. Now we reset the origins to the geometries. So right click, set origin to geometry. And that'll reset the origins of each boot. We can do the same here. That's basically it. So uh, if you haven't watched my video on how to rig a base mesh inside Blender, it's a three part series. Uh, so the first one is just creating the armature itself and adding some functionality to it. The second video is how to actually add inverse kinematics to it to allow for better movement of the legs to allow the joints to bend better and easier. And then the third video shows how to basically set up the feet for walking like this. That way the foot can kind of pivot off of the toe bone here. In this video we're going to basically just add a couple modifications to the armature that we've already made in the past. We're basically going to add some bones right here that control the sleeves. So if you see here, uh, the sleeves kind of hang off the wrist quite a bit. And when you bend the arm or move the hands at all, basically this has no control over this. So that's why we need to add a boner here. So that way we can control the actual direction of the sleeve and make it more realistic. So let's press one on your numpad to go to front view, go into edit mode on your armature and delete half. And we'll symmetrize it later. Anytime you make modifications to an armature, it's best to just kind of delete half of it and then later on you can symmetrize it. So now go ahead and select this bone here. And then make sure it's orange and highlighted. Press E to extrude. And Z. Move it down. And let's press Alt P on it. Clear parents. And move it down. Like right by here. This will be where the sleeves are. Try to keep it a good distance away from the hand. And basically what's going to happen is that this bone is going to be able to rotate like this. And that'll control the actual sleeve itself, just like that. It will also be able to rotate this little section here. So let's go back into edit mode on the bone itself. Let's rename this bone to L dot sleeve control or just L bone, uh, sleeve bone. It doesn't really matter what you name it, just as long as they have a dot L in it somewhere. I'm going to move the bone a little bit inside on the x-axis and kind of rotate like this. This will probably allow for a little bit better control. Now we can actually symmetrize the armature itself. So go back in edit mode, so press everything, so it's like press A and right click, symmetrize. And so basically this bone will be also on this side because we added the dot L to it. On this side it's called dot R. Now we can go back into object mode. Select this rope here. Select the armature. So shift select it. Press control P. And with automatic weights. Let's do the same for the base mesh itself. So select the base mesh. Shift select the armature. Control P. Automatic weights. Uh, so to fix that, I just had to reset the parents of the base mesh clear parent first so if it does any kind of weird problems like that like where it just teleports somewhere else uh, just press alt p on the base mesh clear parent keep transformation press ctrl a and it all transforms to deltas and then shifts like the armature press ctrl p with automatic weights now to read the base mesh to the actual armature itself and we can also do the same for the boots so boots just like the armature automatic weights the same for this one. 
Uh, one more thing I forgot to mention is to select this bone here in edit mode on the armature itself. Shift select the hand dot IK dot L, control P, keep offset, and do the same on this side. And this will basically keep it from stretching. So basically anytime you move this hand, the bone will actually stick with it in the same relative location at all times instead of doing this. So we're nearly done with the character and the rig itself. Uh, but anytime you test it out, you might have some problems. So here you can see that the base mesh is clipping through the robes themselves. That basically just means that we need to kind of fix some weight painting problems. So let's just keep it like this. Go into object mode. Select the armature. Shift select the robe itself. And let's go into weight paint. So now I'm going to press control and left click on this bone. And I'm going to turn the weight pretty close to zero. Uh, just make sure the strength is also pretty low as well. So that way it's not too strong. And basically what I'm going to do is just kind of go across this area and make it a little bit more blue. So the closer to blue it is, the less authority that this bone has over the actual mesh itself. Or the robes, I, I should say. Just kind of stroke along around the mesh and just try to make it to where it's not clipping to the base mesh anymore. So here, if you rotate the elbows, you might get some problems like this, where it has this bone just has too much control. So let's go through and just kind of make this area a bit more dark blue. Now if we see, it's a lot better. Also, make sure to do the same on this side, since if you move this bone, you can still look at the same problems. You just got to do the same thing you did on the other side. So anytime you get clipping, you just move the bones to a good position, like this, to where it has the maximum amount of problems, like that. And select this bone here, control, left click, and just kind of add some blue right here. And just keep testing your bones. So control left click and you can actually still move the bone while in weight paint mode. Just move press G to move the bone around. Let's do the same here. And just get rid of this area. So I'd say that weight painting is probably one of the hardest parts of rigging a character. And probably the most tedious and boring part of it. Uh, but if you can get through this, then you're good. Just fix the problems here. Just experiment with different strengths. So here, actually having it on a darker red is better to fix this little issue right here. So understanding the limits of your character's movements and basically minimizing the problems is the best way you can rig a character. Uh, for this character, since he has a robe on, some of his motions are a bit restricted and might cause some problems with clipping. So I would just say that try to animate in a way that minimizes any kind of clipping problems or hides them at least, makes them invisible to the camera. So now go back into pose mode on your armature. Press A to select everything. Right click, clear use transforms, and this will reset every bone to their original locations. And we can go back into object mode and basically rig the lightsaber that we made last time to the character's right hand right here. So I'm going to show two ways to rig the lightsaber to the character. One has more options, but is a bit harder to do, whereas the other is a bit easier to do and faster, but also just has general less rigging options as well. So now let's go ahead and import the lightsaber that we made last time. So press File, Append, and go to wherever you made the actual scene itself. Just always remember to save your projects. So I already have it in the Jedi scene. I actually modeled it within this scene, so I don't have it anywhere else. But if you're going to import it, you could go to Object in the object itself, and it will automatically import it to the scene. So say, for instance, this plane here. 
It's right here. But that's not what we're going to use. We're just going to use the lightsaber. So the fast and easy way of rigging this lightsaber to the character itself is to select the lightsaber itself, shift, shift select the armature, go into pose mode, and select this bone here, and press Control P to bone, and it's automatically rigged. It's pretty simple. But if you actually want the lightsaber to be able to be separated from the hand itself, it'll have some problems. That's kind of where you know restrictions come in with this option. So I'll show the second option, which allows to actually have this lightsaber be separated from the hands and to be a separate object whenever you want, but also be able to stick to the hand whenever you want as well. So let's go back in object mode, select the lightsaber, clear parents, keep transformation. What we're going to do is press shift A, empty, plane axis. We're going to move this basically to the right hand, right here. Let's rename this lightsaber controller. And basically this empty axis is going to stick to this bone, or it's going to be parented to it with a keep certain offset and the actual lightsaber itself will have a constraint it'll have two constraints to this uh, empty axis so a copy location and copy rotation and set the target as the lightsaber controller also the rotation as well and you don't need to turn on offset right now because we can actually rotate the actual axis itself so rotate it 90 degrees to RX 90, move it to like right here, right in between the index and thumb fingers. What we're going to do is select the empty axis, shift select the armature, go into pose mode, and control P on this bone here to bone. So now this bone controls the empty axis, and the empty axis controls the lightsaber. But since we added an object constraint, you notice here it has an influence of one we can set it to zero and so now the actual axis itself doesn't have any control and neither does this but if you turn it back to one it has 100 percent control and so basically this is useful for better animation whenever you want more options for your character and you can keyframe the influence, for instance, at one frame, and then keyframe it as zero, another frame. So that way you can actually have it kind of like stick to another location. Or maybe you want the actual the character to be able to throw the lightsaber and have it actually be like a physical object. In that case, you could add like a physics modifier to it. One of these, I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video, but basically that's just what this option allows. So at this point, you would basically just pose out the fingers to have them wrap around the actual hilt itself. So you can select all these bones. I'm going to turn on individual origins. Press R, X, and then X twice. That'll rotate all the fingers here. Just rotate some so that they're not clipping through. That's pretty much it. So we have fully rigged the character, and as a bonus, I'm going to show how to set up the little lights to the lightsaber itself for renders. So here you can see the lightsaber doesn't have any actual lighting effect on the character itself. So to fix that, you can press Shift A, create a point lights. Maybe it's like then the end, and you could actually have a second one as well to kind of even out the light distribution. And you can set the color to green. And turn up the strength. Do the same for this one. You can just duplicate the same one you made before. And to have both of these lights actually stick to the lightsaber itself, you can select both of them and then shift select the lightsaber. Press Control P to keep offset or to keep transform. I mean, so anytime you rotate the blade, it'll also rotate the lights with it for dynamic lighting 
and if you want the lights to turn off whenever the blade retracts like this it's no problem uh, you can just turn down the strength to zero for both so I'd recommend keyframing both uh, you can actually keyframe the value of the light strength so right now it's 43 at this point you know it'd be zero all right guys that's the end of this video uh, if you have any questions just leave a comment down below and i'll try to answer them and if you please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel i'd really help out a bunch and i really appreciate it uh, but anyways i hope you all guys found this video useful and see you guys next time